What if gravity repelled instead of attracted? That might sound like something straight out of science fiction, but repulsive gravity is not only real, it may have shaped the entire history of the universe. From the Big Bang to its ultimate fate, in fact, without it, the cosmos as we know it might not even exist. Today we're diving deep into this mind-bending idea. What is repulsive gravity? How does it explain the accelerating expansion of the universe? And could it hold the key to faster than light travel? That's coming up right now. We experience gravity all the time. It keeps us on the ground, makes apples fall from trees, and holds planets in orbit around the sun. But gravity doesn't work the way most people think it does. For centuries, we thought of gravity as a force of attraction. Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation told us that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. The theory was simple, powerful, and incredibly accurate. So much so that it remained unchallenged for over 200 years. But early in the 20th century, Einstein came along and developed a more complete theory of gravity. In his theory of special relativity, he united space and time, previously believed to be universal and independent, into a single dynamical four-dimensional continuum. He followed that up 10 years later with general relativity, where he theorized that mass and energy could warp this space-time continuum. So that's when we were introduced to the idea of space-time as a malleable fabric that could compress and expand. And it was this warping or bending of space-time that we perceive as gravity. Planets and stars bend space-time, and objects move along these distortions. Gravity, it turns out, was better modeled by geometry. But here's where it gets even weirder. If mass curves space, why couldn't there be things that curve it in the opposite way, pushing rather than pulling? This question is not as outlandish as it sounds. It might, in fact, be the only way to explain the current state of our cosmos. For decades, astronomers assumed the expansion of the universe should be slowing down due to the gravitational pull of matter being in opposition to the push of expansion. But in the early 1990s, something completely unexpected was discovered. Distant supernovae observations showed that the universe is not just expanding, but that this expansion is accelerating, meaning it's expanding faster and faster. Something is pushing space apart, acting like an anti-gravity force. Scientists call this mysterious effect dark energy. We don't know exactly what dark energy is, it could be a new kind of energy field, or it could be an intrinsic property of empty space itself. But whatever it is, it's not a small effect. Dark energy makes up 68% of the total energy in the universe. In contrast, normal matter, everything you've ever seen or touched, only accounts for about 5% of the total energy density, and the remaining 27% being made up of dark matter, which is yet another mysterious component with attractive gravitational properties. But dark energy isn't the only time repulsive gravity may have played a role in shaping the universe. In fact, the very birth of the universe, colloquially referred to as the Big Bang, might have been driven by a similar phenomenon. According to the theory of cosmic inflation, a brief but immense expansion occurred in the very first tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang, causing the universe to grow exponentially. This rapid expansion requires a form of repulsive gravity possibly caused by a high-energy field known as the inflaton field. If repulsive gravity shaped both the beginning of the universe and its long-term fate, could it be a fundamental feature of reality? Before I answer that question, let me talk for a minute about the reality of the world that we live in. I get over 100 spam emails and two dozen telemarketing calls a day. I suspect many of you are in the same boat. This is why I partnered with Incogni, the sponsor of this video, to help protect me. The problem is our information is mined by dozens of anonymous companies and sold to various marketing companies. Many of these are scammers trying to rip you off or steal your identity. The reality is that there are hundreds of commercial databases that hold your personal information, which puts you and your family at constant risk. The good news is that you have a right to protect your privacy. But to try to do that yourself by finding these companies and contacting them one by one is, for me anyway, simply overwhelming. But Incogni makes it very simple. 
It's so easy to set up. You just create an account by letting them know whose data should be removed and then give them permission to work on your behalf. Then you just kick back and watch them work. Incogni reaches out to the data brokers, gets your personal data removed, and deals with any issues or objections, so you don't have to. Just look at my dashboard showing how more than 250 data removal requests have already been completed. You'll see similar results for yourself. All you have to do is just go to incogni.com slash arvinash to get 60% off an annual plan, or you can just click the link in the description below. I think you're really going to appreciate this service. Now let's get back to answering the question of whether repulsive gravity is fundamental. To answer that question, let's first answer the question, how can gravity repel? A key difference between Newtonian gravity and general relativity is that in Einstein's theory, the source of gravity is not mass, but energy. This relationship is expressed by the field equations. The part on the left-hand side describes the local curvature of space-time, while the right-hand side encodes the density and flux of energy and momentum. The equation was summed up in a famous saying by the physicist John Wheeler, space-time tells matter how to move and matter tells space-time how to curve. For an expanding universe whose size increases with a scale factor, Einstein's equation can be rewritten in the following way, known as the Friedman equation. On the left, we have the acceleration of the expansion. On the right side, rho stands for energy density and P for pressure. So there are two ways to get an accelerated expansion, also known as repulsive gravity, negative energy or negative pressure. What does pressure mean in the context of space-time? It's related to the distribution and flow of energy in space. If we think of masses as dips in space-time, we can visualize pressure as an effect that modifies the shapes of these dips. Positive pressure increases curvature, making the dips deeper and steeper. So it contributes to gravitational pull and slows down expansion. Negative pressure, on the other hand, is like an intrinsic stretching of space-time that smooths out curvature. This can be counterintuitive because in daily life, when we think of positive pressure, it's pushing things away. For example, blowing more air into a balloon, causing it to inflate. But this is a different kind of mechanical pressure and should not be confused with pressure in the context of space-time, which has to do with the gravitational effect of positive energy densities. And here's the crucial part. Normal matter, like stars and planets, have positive energy and exert a negligible but positive pressure. They attract and their energy density decreases with expansion. Radiation, like photons and other particles moving at very high speeds, has positive energy and pressure. It also attracts and its energy gets diluted faster than that of normal matter, evolving as we see in redshifts in addition to volume dilution. Dark energy has an unusual property, negative pressure. Generalizing the two previous examples, a substance with a negative pressure will get diluted slower than normal matter, or not at all. In the latter case, known as the cosmological constant, the energy density remains unchanged throughout cosmic history. In other words, as the volume of space increases, more energy is continuously created. The cumulative repulsive effect then leads to exponentially accelerated expansion. But what is this energy made of for its density to remain constant with expansion? This mysterious component must be an intrinsic property of space-time, present in equal amounts at every point and continuously stretching the fabric of the cosmos. The energy of quantum fluctuations, pairs of virtual particles constantly popping into and out of existence, seems like a perfect candidate. But there's just one issue. The value of the vacuum energy predicted by quantum field theory is a whopping 120 orders of magnitude larger than the measured cosmological constant. This problem, which was dubbed the worst prediction in the history of physics, remains a fundamental open question. A possible solution could be that the vacuum energy cancels out to zero through an unknown symmetry, and the dark energy is made up of exotic particles. This scenario, known as evolving dark energy, or quintessence, relies on a scalar quantum field. Just like the Higgs field, vacuum energy is a scalar field and has a single value at every point in space-time. This is unlike, for example, the electromagnetic field, which is a vector field, having both a value and a direction. 
The energy of such a field can vary in time and space, but in the case where these variations are slow, it behaves essentially like a cosmological constant. We know of at least one scalar field in the standard model of particle physics, the Higgs field, which has been proposed in some models as the driving force behind inflation. Other theories include new fields, which have not been discovered yet. Interestingly, recent large-scale surveys of the universe have found hints indicating that dark energy may be slowly evolving in time, in accordance with the quintessence idea. But more data is needed to draw reliable conclusions. If these observations are confirmed, we might then wonder whether dark energy and inflation could be two sides of the same coin, linked by an unknown quantum field. So what does this mean for the future of the cosmos? If dark energy remains constant, the universe will keep expanding forever. Galaxies will drift apart and eventually the night sky will go dark. If dark energy grows stronger over time, we would face a kind of a terrifying scenario known as the Big Rip, where repulsive gravity eventually becomes so strong that it tears apart galaxies, stars, planets, even atoms, and then space-time itself. On the other hand, if dark energy weakens, the universe could one day stop expanding and collapse back in something called the Big Crunch, possibly setting the stage for a new Big Bang in a cyclic universe. Now, here's where things get really exciting. If we could create repulsive gravity artificially, it could unlock futuristic technologies straight out of science fiction. One idea comes from wormholes, mathematical solutions of Einstein's equations where two black holes are connected by a tunnel of some sort. In theory, a wormhole could let you step in one end and instantly appear somewhere else in the universe. The problem? Wormholes are unstable and predicted to collapse almost instantly under their own gravity. But if we had negative energy, we could keep them open, making faster than light travel possible. Another proposal is the Alcubierre warp drive. This idea suggests using negative energy to contract space in front of a spaceship and expand it behind, forming a kind of bubble that would allow it to surf a wave of space-time at any speed without technically violating the speed of light. But there's a problem, negative energy an energy level lower than that of empty space is incredibly difficult to create. One of the few known ways to produce it is through the Casimir effect, where quantum fluctuations between two metal plates are restricted, temporarily allowing for a region of slight negative energy, which attracts the plates together. But the effect is incredibly weak, and sustaining large amounts of negative energy seems impossible with our current understanding of physics. So while repulsive gravity already exists in the universe, harnessing it for practical purposes remains highly speculative. But make no mistake, repulsive gravity is shaping our universe right now, and it may hold the key to some of the wildest possibilities in science and science fiction, from wormholes to warp drives. There are a few key questions that further research needs to answer. Could dark energy be a clue to a deeper theory of reality? Is it linked to cosmic inflation? The force that appears to have driven the ultra-rapid expansion of the early universe, causing it to be as homogeneous as we observe it today? And most importantly, can we learn to control it? Or will it just be a cosmic curiosity? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video, my friends.